Can we use any specific supplements to help our immune system, specifically to help train our innate immunity, one of the most important parts of our immune system? And why would that be important is because right now we are seeing that certain people post mRNA vaccinations produce IgG4 antibodies. And according to Dr. Van der Bosch, Gerd Van der Bosch, he claims that production of such antibodies would also prevent proper training of the innate immune system, the type of immune system we absolutely need for proper defend, defending against infections of biopathogens, such as obviously coronavirus. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashek of Mara Genomics. Let's get started. And what are we specifically talking about is beta glucans all right so let's start from the beginning let's talk about the innate immune system now innate immune system is the type of immune system that is always on it's always present it consists of a bunch of different immune cells they include monocytes macrophages dendritic cells and natural killer cells and they're always scanning the body around they they are always present so it's always the first defense against pathogen and it's only when that system doesn't do its proper work, when that system is overwhelmed, that you need to resort to the adaptive immune system, which can be trained, and that will include antibodies. So, in the last 15 years or so, it has been discovered that the innate immune system can also be trained and in fact that is now referred referred to as trained immunity and it is and we're going to be talking about this in a moment how that it happens and why did i even find out about beta glucans it was actually through a review that talked about use of beta glucans in relation to exercising so <laughs> it's it's a bit of a complicated story but bear with me so we all know that sedentary lifestyle, so lifestyle where you don't do much of an exercise is not good for you. And that includes partially because it weakens your immune system. On the other hand, you can also have a lifestyle that you can do a moderate exercise and a bit of exercise can actually help your immune system, train your immune system. So. But did you know that excessive and heavy duty exercise can also weaken your immune system? Yes, it's true. And it can literally actually increase your likelihood of infections. It lasts a short time, it's very transient. Based on this review that I'm discussing today, it's about between three to 72 hours post heavy duty strenuous exercise, your immune system could be could be subject to not performing at its best. And we're going to talk about in a moment as to why. So why is that? It's because you need immune system to start healing injuries. And strenuous exercise can induce injuries. And as a consequence of that, you can suppress your immune system, overwhelm your immune system, I should say, so that so that, sorry, just waiting for a bit of a wind to pass. So that your immune system cannot properly function in terms of helping to heal your injuries. Just trying to figure out where I can go. All right, so now let's go back to these beta glucans. So what are these? Beta glucans are basically types of sugars. They're sugars that are linked together in specific chains and they code these beta glucans code the microorganisms so if you have an in infection it's the in these innate immune cells that start recognizing these sugar patterns they look at this basically three-dimensional shape of these sugar patterns via specific receptors that are on the surface of these innate immune cells and they use what is referred to as pattern recognition receptors. And they look at these, these patterns and 
this is how innate immune system can be trained because if the pattern changes what happens is the cells will recognize this different pattern and then what happens is specific metabolic changes occur inside these cells and the altered metabolism because of the changes in the sugar patterns rewires epigenetic information inside these cells now what is epigenetic information it's a type of information where it can where it can chemically alter either certain information on top of dna or certain chemically you can alter certain proteins that regulate access to dna and in this way you determine how a cell behaves so that means when the environment changes the cell can recognize this change in the environment and as a consequence rewire how its genetic information is used so that it can respond properly to the changes of the envir environment so um, that's basically how you can train the immunity of this innate immune system again this is fairly new knowledge it was used to believe that it's always static now we know that innate immune system can be trained this is so powerful that in fact the vast majority of infections are dealt with by your innate immune system so as a consequence the, during the pandemic, for example, of course, when the pandemics first started, right, we were all naive. We were never ever seeing this pathogen before, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And yet the vast majority of people who were infected were fine. Not only the vast majority of people did not get sick, obviously even fewer people would have, would have died from infection. So why is that? It's because the innate immune system was dealing with these pathogens. And because of the sugar patterns on top of a pathogen, they can be shared between pathogens. This is how you can train your immune system even by different pathogen and yet your innate immune system can start recognizing, hey, this is what's going on in the world right now. It will start clearing up all of the different pathogens. So that's, that's, one, that's how powerful it is. And it's only when, when that is bypassed by, by, the, by the pathogen, that's when you finally start kicking in with the adaptive immune system, such as activation of antibodies. So antibodies come in much, much later on. It's just that we focus so much on antibodies because that's the area of our immune system that we at least know how to control, okay? So that's the reason why we're so obsessed about antibodies and including vaccination. But as you can see, there's other ways we could be training our, our immune system as well towards defending, defending against pathogens. So where do these beta-glucans come in? As I mentioned, they are on the surface the, uh, of pathogens. The path then the innate immune cells, what they do, they will literally recognize the pathogen and they will swallow it, swallow it up. Basically, they will just eat the pathogen and that's called phagocytosis and the pathogen will be destroyed inside cut up into say fragments and these fragments are then these cells will travel to other areas of the body where they present fragments of these pathogens so they can start activating other immune uh, other aspects of the immune system but they also release these beta glucans that come from the pathogens and the and this is how these beta glucans can then be used from these pathogens to stimulate inflammation and faster response towards pathogens this is also we might as well add why inflammation actually is important we always hear inflammation is bad inflammation is bad not good for you and that's true if you have it chronically, because inflammation is very important as a defensive mechanism, but it's also dangerous because it's a defensive mechanism to activate your immune system, but it can be destructive, including destructive to your own body. So you don't want inflammation to be, exi to, to be on often, hence chronic inflammation can even lead to generation of like inflammatory diseases. So that's not something we want all the time we just only want it 
to be activated when absolutely needed. And that's basically when we are defending ourselves. So in that case, can we use beta glucans to, to help with our innate immune system? And there has been apparently a number of different clinical studies showing that supplementing with beta glucans can help in variety of conditions such as helping with dealing with allergic reactions but it can even help with general health as well as help with with even like in this article where was mentioning can even help with mental health as well or, or emotional like just emotional state uh, well-being so the, very very interesting but where beta glucans are also apparently really really amazing is in, with the with the use for healing injuries so wound healing and a, a reason why is because you need to activate the immune immune system to to help why because inflammation is needed for healing injuries not only do you bring the immune cells into the site of injury where they can start making sure that any infection does not take place does not take root but also of course you need inflammation as well to start the clotting process which is what you need to for example patch up things in say your vascular system so we obviously did series on on clotting and including how there can be now abnormal clotting observed under unusual circumstances including exposure to spike protein so beta glucans can stimulate that process to help healing and that's where the exercise comes in how and why exercise can suppress the immune system because you literally overwhelm your innate immune system by having too many injuries micro injuries from excessive strenuous exercise and the authors of this article that i discussed talked about how supplementation with beta glucans could be used by athletes in order to speed up the healing process but this of course triggered my thinking well does that mean that we could be using beta glucans right now and i don't know what the answer to this is this is this is a question that i'm posing to see should we be investigating this whether this could be an avenue a resource for us where we could be using beta glucans to start improving the function of our innate immune system as a defensive mechanism against our current constant interaction with the SARS-CoV-2 which is constantly mutating, constantly evolving and as a consequence we are constantly exposed to slightly different versions of this virus and we are constantly being infected. So could beta-glucans help? And then remember we are now we are now starting to observe unusual, unusual outcomes with some of the people who have received the mRNA vaccines against COVID-19, that they are producing these unusual antibodies called IgG4 antibodies, which start help to build tolerance against spike protein, not something that is welcome. And as I mentioned, one of the, the theories that is proposed by by one of the scientists that that only publishes this information on on his blog dr bosch and he talks about that he doesn't call these antibodies as igg4 he calls them polyclonal non-neutralizing antibodies and he claims that these type of antibodies help to reduce the likelihood of training your innate immune system which is exact which is not what you want because that's your primary first defensive mechanism so you can appreciate now that perhaps if that's the case and indeed we are observing these igg4 antibodies and these igg4 antibodies is what dr bosch as far as i understand calls these polyclonal non-neutralizing antibodies well can we overcome that sorry i got a big cast of wind and I can't get away from it. Can we use beta glucans to protect and improve our innate immune system? So is that a, an avenue we could be researching or investigating to basically help 
the situation. Oh well, at least let me turn around, maybe show you a slightly different view. <laughs> Hair is a mess as always. So that's what I wanted to focus about because I just found it super interesting. And I hope some scientist will consider maybe investigating this. As I mentioned, there's been a number of clinical trials that have been done with beta glucans. And therefore, perhaps we should be starting to investigate whether beta glucans could be used as well to help to help dealing with the current situation where we are constantly still exposed and infected by the SARS-CoV-2 virus and especially in some of the individuals that are producing these IgG4 antibodies. We did a number of videos dedicated to IgG4 antibodies so please check them out as well and uh, and again I hope that we're going to start paying more attention to what is going on as well and yeah well, that's all I have for you today all I want to say to wrap this video is thank you everyone for your support thanks thank you for sharing the videos this is how it grow thanks for all the comments I'm receiving and uh, thanks for supporting the patreon account where I post additional content that does not make it to to YouTube as well and I look forward to seeing you in another installment and one more thing I want to mention perhaps um, is I've been invited to present at a couple conferences thanks to this video. So this is how your support makes a big, big deal. And link to one of these conferences dedicated to long COVID and chronic fatigue syndrome were posted in, in the video. I assume that by the time this video might come out, the conference might have already happened. We'll see <laughs> when the video comes out, but also check that out. And another thing is I've been also invited to co-author a publication as well on how live vaccines versus non-live vaccines might be interacting with the innate immune system and as a consequence have non-specific effects. This is one of the reasons why live vaccines are so powerful that they can protect not only against the disease that they were designed for but have non-specific protection against other infections and this is exactly one of the ways that it might be achieving this by having by, by providing this training of the innate immune system or trained immunity. Mm -hmm.